let's now practice a, a numerical question based on the concept of uh, circumpolar bodies we have the basic understanding of the circumpolar bodies now so let's go into this question the question says to a stationary observer an unknown star bore 000 true with a true altitude of 78 degrees 12 minutes after about 12 hours the same star bore 180 true with a true altitude of 18 degrees 54 minutes we have to calculate the observer's latitude and the star's declination so a very straightforward and simple uh, looking question you observe here in this question that the star is bearing 000 at a particular time and after about 12 hours it is again bearing 180 so at one time it was north at other time it was south so this is only possible in case of a circumpolar body otherwise for bodies which are not circumpolar they come north or south of the observer only once in 24 hours anyway let's now try to see how do we solve these type of questions now all circumpolar questions can be solved using a single approach if you have that approach clear in your mind you will be able to attempt any question based on circumpolar bodies not only circumpolar bodies uh, later on we will also see the questions based on rational horizon diagram and the same approach is applicable to those questions also so what is this approach with uh, which we can solve these questions the approach is that in all these questions you make a rational horizon diagram make a rational horizon diagram and whatever information is given to you in the question a true altitude or a bearing whatever is given to you try to put all that information in that rational horizon diagram itself now when you put all the information what was given in the question in the rational horizon diagram the diagram itself will give you a lead into solving the question for circumpolar bodies you will not even need to use a formula no formula is required only by adding or subtracting you will be able to find your answer but in other rational horizon question once you put all the information in the diagram you will be able to solve it by a spherical trigonometry formula a pzx triangle is formed and you are able to solve it using either the cosine formula or the napier's rule so let us uh, apply this approach in this particular question and see how it works let's draw the rational horizon of the observer let's mark off the nesw points and at the center of this diagram we have the zenith represented by z exactly in the center of this diagram so let's try to put the information now what is given to us the star is bearing 000 with a true altitude of 78 degrees 12 minutes now in this diagram the 000 bearing or north bearing is represented by line nz line nz represents the north bearing or 000 bearing so the star has to be somewhere on this line now point n being on the horizon is at 0 degree altitude point z being the zenith of the observer is at 90 degree altitude the altitude which we require is 7812 so from the horizon going 78 12 somewhere here is going to be our star so let's mark off this altitude in green you can see the green color line on the plot now representing altitude of 78 12 and this is where we have the star so unknown star is bearing 000 and it is at a true altitude of 78 12 now after about 12 hours the same star bore 180 true now 180 bearing is represented by line zs 
And uh, on this line, we have to mark it through altitude of 1854. S is the horizon, zero degree altitude. Z is the zenith, 90 degree altitude. So from the horizon, we move 18 degrees, 54 minutes up. From the horizon, we move 18 degrees, 54 minutes up. And this is where our star is. So let's mark off the star here. Uh, you can name this location as Y. The initial location where the star was bearing north is named as X. And at southerly bearing, the star is named as Y. So you have all the information what was given in the question in the diagram now. Now these X and Y indicate the location of the same star. Now, if the star is at X location at one point of time, and after about 12 hours, it is at Y location, that means the declination circle of the star has to be such that it passes from both X and Y. The declination circle should be such that it passes from both these points, X and Y. Now, there is only one possibility of how the declination circle is going to be. And that possibility is the declination circle passing from both the locations in this way. There is no other circle which you can draw in this diagram so that point X and point Y lie on that same circle. So this is the only possibility of the declination circle of the star. So you see, once we have position X and Y known to us, we can easily make the declination circle of the star. So this is the approach. Now, from the declination circle, now we can also identify the pole. We are aware that all the declination circles are centered at the pole. Now we have the declination circle of this particular star. So that tells us that at the center of this circle will be the pole. So let us draw the pole. It will be at the center of this particular circle. The center is going to be here. So let's mark the center of this circle. This is where the center is. And let's mark this as point P. So we have the pole in our diagram now as the center of the circle. And uh, we can also mark off the direction in which the star is moving in the circle. These uh, green arrows, they represent the direction in which the star will be moving. All the celestial bodies, they rise on the eastern horizon. They go up to the meridian of the observer and they set on the western horizon. So this is the direction in which the bodies appear to move. So we have the center at the pole, center of the declination circle. Now moving further, you see the distance n to x is 78 degree 12 minutes and the distance s to y is 1854 minutes. Now we know that from s to z is 90 degrees and from Z to N is also 90 degrees. So total distance from N to S is 180. The diameter of this diagram, the rational horizon diagram is 180. If N to S is 180, we know NX 78, 12, and we know SY 1854. Then in that case, we can easily find out this particular distance that is from X to Y. It will be 180 minus 1854 minus 7812. So XY in this case comes to 82 degrees and 54 minutes. So XY is 82 degrees and 54 minutes. Now this XY is the diameter of the declination circle. If you divide it by 2, you will get the radius of this declination circle. 
So 8254 divided by 2 gives you 4127. So this 4127 is the radius of this circle, which is equal to Px or Py. So polar distance of the star P to X is the radius of this declination circle. Once the pole is there in the diagram, we can also mark off the equinoxial. The point Q of the equinoxial is 90 degrees away from the pole. So we have the pole here. 90 degree away from the pole is this point Q on the equinoxial. And we know equinoxial always passes from east and west points. So joining W, Q and E, we can mark off the equinoxial in our diagram. Now we know the polar distance Px, we have calculated it as half the diameter. It is 4127. From this, we can now find out the declination of the star, which is basically how far away from the equinoxial this star is, that is Q to X. And this declination is equal to 90 minus polar distance. You can see P to Q is 90. P to X is 4127, that is the polar distance. So Q to X will be 90 minus 4127, that is 48 degree 33 minutes. So QX, which is the declination of the star, is equal to 48, 33 minutes. And we can see in the diagram that the star is south of the equinoxial, so the declination is south. 4833 south. So this was one of the items which was required. The star's declination has been obtained as 4833 south. Now, Beta, any doubt up to here? Sir, I was starting to say that the body to be on the same meridian, it will take 24 hours. Uh, if, if it is not circumpolar, if it is not circumpolar, then it will come back on the meridian after 24 hours. Like what, what happens with the sun. But sir, in free meridian, it will reach after 12 hours, no, sir? Right, but beta, you will be able to see it only if it is circumpolar. OK, so a body which okay. is not circumpolar, it will uh, come to your meridian after 20, 24 hours. Yes, in the but, our uh, region, it will be out 24 hours. Okay. Right, but if a body is circumpolar and you are able to see it crossing your inferior meridian also, then it should be there after an interval of about 12 hours. For sun, it will be exactly 12. For moon, it will be little more than 12. So if a body is circumpolar, then it will come on your inferior meridian after about 12 hours. Uh, sir, tell me about x, y, sir. Okay. Uh, beta, n point to s point, the total n to s is how much? Sir, please repeat, sir. Uh, beta, from point n in our diagram, to point S. Ye total distance aap bata sakte ho kitna hai? N to S. So 90 sir. Uh, no beta. Uh, Z is the zenith. N is the horizon. So horizon se zenith ke beech mein arc kitni hoti hai beta? So 180. Yeah. N to Z is 90. Horizon to zenith is 90. So n to z 90 and z to s 90. So this tells us that the total distance from n to s will be 180. OK? Yes, yeah, sir. So this total distance we know, beta. Now we know nx is 7812. We know sy is 1854. So can you tell me how can we find the xy distance now? OK, sir. Got it, sir. Yes, sir. OK. Okay. Or without beta or doubt. Okay. So shall we move on to finding the latitude now? Yes, sir. Okay. 
ओके लेट्स मूव अहेड नाउ वी हैव द डेक्लिनेशन द नेक्स्ट थिंग विच वी नीड टू फाइंड इज द लेटीट्यूड ऑफ द ऑब्जर्वर नाउ फाइंडिंग द लेटीट्यूड इज ईजी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डायग्राम द लेटीट्यूड इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय जेड क्यू जेड इज दैनिथ क्यू इज द इक्वीन ऑक्शियल सो जेड क्यू रिप्रेजेंट द लेटीट्यूड ऑफ द ऑब्जर्वर एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू पी एस और एस पी एस पी और पी एस इज द एलिवेशन ऑफ द पोल और द एल्टीट्यूड ऑफ द पोल एंड वी आर अवेयर दैट द एलिवेशन ऑफ द पोल इज ऑलवेज इक्वल टू द लेटीट्यूड ऑफ द ऑब्जर्वर सो इफ वी फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ पी एस इट विल गिव अस द लेटीट्यूड नाउ पी एस इज इजी टू फाइंड पी एस इज बेसिकली इक्वल टू एस वाई प्लस पी वाई एस वाई इज गिवन एज एटीन फिफ्टी फोर दैट इज द एल्टीट्यूड ऑफ द स्टार सो वी नो एस वाई इज एटीन फिफ्टी फोर एंड पी वाई इज नथिंग बट द पोलर डिस्टेंस ऑफ द स्टार विट वी हैड ऑलरेडी फाउंड आउट सो एस वाई एटीन फिफ्टी फोर and py is the polar distance which we already found was 4127 so when you add these two sy plus py gives you the elevation of the pole equal to the latitude of the observer and it comes to 60 degrees 21 minute south so both the required items have been obtained the declination of the star is found and the latitude of the observer is also obtained so this is also clear beta yes sir okay all right so this is how beta the numerical questions on uh, circumpolar bodies uh, uh, they are put to us so this was a simple straightforward question so we are aware now how the approach should be when we are solving these numerical questions basically it is making the rational horizon diagram feeding all the information in that diagram and then automatically the answer will be obtained from the diagram itself so with this we complete the circumpolar bodies uh, topic so we can now move forward to our uh, next topic